Hi everyone, wishing you all a Shabbat Shalom and Vorach. This week's Perashat Tazriya, we read about the disease, the affliction called Tzara'at, which is similar to leprosy. It was something that appeared either on a person's skin or clothing or on their house. But our rabbis tell us that Tzara'at would primarily come upon a person for the sin of gossip. And this was God's message of trying to relate to this person that they should stop speaking about other people. Of course, gossip is something that we all struggle with, especially in a time, in an age, in a society where speaking negatively about other people is something that's not only uh, acceptable, but roasting is even encouraged and applauded. Of course, one needs to only refer to the events of Sunday night at the Oscars to see the damage that roasting and speaking about other people can result in. Of course, I'm not here to speak about the events of that night, but I would like to speak a little bit about gossip, about Lashonara, because there's so much in our literature about speaking negatively about other people. You know, the Chavot HaLevavot writes around 900 years ago that when someone speaks gossip, they receive all of the sins of the person they spoke about. Now that's wild, that's frightening, and it also sounds very arbitrary. It sounds so random that I should get their sins. How does the punishment match the crime? Just because I spoke Lashon Hara about them, so punish me. So give me a sin or give me a big sin. But why do I get all of their sins, all of the negative things that they did? I should now, all of their Averot should come to me? What, what does that have to do with the gossip that I spoke about? And I saw something very powerful. Why is it that people knock and speak negatively and roast either a person or a group of people? Why is it that we do that? Why do people love speaking Lashon Hara? You know, in life, we all need a strong sense of self, a self-esteem, confidence. And there are two ways to build one's own confidence, one's own self-esteem. The first way, and this is the right way, are to notice my strengths, my virtues, and to build on those, to know what it is that, that I'm good at and what it is that I can offer the world. The second way of building myself up, and this is the wrong way, is by knocking everyone around me down. If I could put everybody else lower than me, then I can feel tall. Matter of fact, there was once a politician who was short, And he, on live television, would hire midgets to stand around him in order to make himself feel tall. A lot of times in life when we're not feeling good about ourselves, when we're feeling guilty about our responsibilities and how we've been acting as a parent, what we'll do is we'll often knock our spouse and we'll show them that they're a worse parent than we are. And if they're worse, then relatively, I'm okay, I feel big, I feel strong. If my spouse... Uh, is, is a bad wife or a bad husband, then I'm not so bad. If the people around me are not so religious, then I'm pretty happy about where I stand in my relationship to God. That's why so many times people love knocking the avot, the forefathers, the holiest people in our religion. And we like labeling Yaakov as dishonest. Why do we like doing that? Because the answer is it makes us feel good about our lack of honesty. If if we don't have integrity, if we've been doing dishonest things, but Yaakov Avinu also does those things, then I'm in good company. I don't feel so bad about myself. If I can knock other people down, then all of a sudden I feel big, I feel important, and I feel strong. And of course, that is not the right way to build on our self-esteem. When a person speaks gossip, when they speak about other people negatively, and they notice and they pinpoint all of the mistakes of those around them, that person is trying to build themselves up at the expense of other people's flaws. What this person in essence is saying is that I don't have any intrinsic existence. I don't exist on my own. I need you and I need your mistakes for me to live. I feed, I live off of your mistakes and your flaws. And if that is the case, says the Torah, it's only fair that that person should, in other words, pay the bill should have to pay for the, for the averot, for the sins of that person because your sins make me into who I am. We should be zocher to be able to find and build ourselves not at the expense and the weaknesses and the negativity of other people, but by noticing the strengths and the virtues of ourselves. Shabbat shalom.